Hello, everybody. I know this is a early start on a Wednesday, June 27, 2018. All of you guys and girls, Periscope, welcome. YouTube, welcome. Twitch, nobody's there probably. But welcome, guys. Jason Koss, I see you. RZA McKine, Hacks Against Hacks. Marnie's here. Gizor's here. Prince Noob Sauce, Server Cod, hello, Remove Lizard, Mad G, everybody, David Bash, Float Buzz, blah blah blah, everybody, shout outs, Dreams Forever, Ryan A, John Jinx, Weaver Fan Club, uh, all of you, thank you for joining us this early. Matthew Weaver, you are here too, and Moses Garner, Double C, Double C, yeah, everybody's coming, Keeping It Horror, everybody, all right. The time is here finally, and now you get to know who our mystery guest is. Guest is, and you guys have it guessed correctly. Um, but I think you're going to really, really be in for a treat. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our guest soon. Let me go ahead and turn the music down here. So, again, thank you guys, Patty the C. I see you. In Periscope, so all of you guys, thank you. I'm going to un unmute everyone now and. Uh, get right to our guest in a second here. So let me go ahead and unmute these characters that are waiting in there. And I hope our technical difficulties have been fixed. You never know. All right. Let's see here. Hopefully you can hear our guest. Because that I would be unmuted? horrible. That would be horrible. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you none other than the king of all media. No. Look at this, Ron Brewer. Thank Ron. Yeah, everybody knows Ron. Hi, Ron. What's up? I hope your mic works. Nope, your mic doesn't work. Does his mic work? No. Ron, you're gonna have to leave the Discord and come back in like we just did because it just doesn't work. <laughs> oh, Jimmer, come on now. I know this. This is so. Yes, I think we can hear you now. Cool. Can you hear me now? There he is, Ron Brower. Oh, Welcome, and thank you for joining. Look at this guy. Doesn't he look good? Doesn't he look the same from the Howard TV days? Hey, Ron. Hey. hey, Kitty, we have your background noise, by the way. So, Ron, thank you for joining. Um, you look fabulous. Well, thank you. You look like fucking Howard Stern. Do you get that often? <laughs> you think, Jimmer? Uh, I am a... You think? I, I am exploding in You're my pants. every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes. And that's this only is, when I go out. I'm sure... Do you go out a lot? No. In, in the city? Are you in New York City, by the way? Yes, like, I'm in the Flatiron District. So you don't go out often? No, I work at home, so I'm... Uh, work on my computer most of the time. If I go out, it's just to uh, the gym across the street or Whole Foods or something like that. Now, I have a question for you, okay? A ton of questions, but let's start. Are you a Howard Stern Show fan? Were you ever a Howard Stern Show fan? No. Okay, so <laughs> it's crazy because when did you start looking like him? When did people start noticing that Wow, you, you look like Howard Stern. Are you Howard Stern? When was this? Like, what year? Well, um, I actually have a 10-minute uh, a performance piece called I'm Not Him. And I talk about that. Um, I was in Los Angeles for six months in, uh, from July 99 to January 2000. And while I was out there, um, it's the only time I've ever owned a car. So... I'd be, you know, flicking through the stations, listening to music, but sometimes I came across this guy, Howard Stern, and he sounded really pissed off, so if I was stuck in a traffic jam or something and I was feeling pissed off, I'd be, oh yeah, this guy's, you know, he's as pissed off as I am. And that was when he, he first came into my consciousness, and then we moved back to New York in January 2000, and all of a sudden, people started going, noticing me, and that was weird. Right. So it was right around 2000. So 2000, okay. And how tall are you, by the way? Uh, if I stand straight up, it's six two and a half. Six two and a half. So you are a tall, dude. So yeah. you could get away. 
pretty much as being Howard because you have the body type. I mean, when you see Howard, you go, oh my God, we're like identical twins. Not really. No, you don't? He, he said no. two inches taller than me and not as good looking. So you think you're better looking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. All yeah. right. So there are stories though um, where like if you go to like a news like in front of the news buildings i don't know nbc wherever the fuck it, it is in new york but uh they think you're howard and they try to interview you D do you run into that situation because i remember you talked about it once years ago where somebody thought that you were howard what was it that what's his name D does anyone know the guy's name the weatherman god damn it from good morning america <laughs> Al Roker. Al, Roker. Al, Roker. Al Roker and the other guy who's Howard's friend, the guy who got Matt that Lauer. sexual. Matt Lauer. Did they pull you aside one time and thought, did they think that you were actually him or somebody else? No, Matt Lauer say? kind of groped me one time, but, you know, that was in a bar. Oh. Did, are you serious? <laughs> You're such a liar. <laughs> did he really grope you? I believe it, though. No, that didn't happen. That happened. It's okay. <laughs> So, when you do go out, is it kind of annoying because I'm sure a lot of people come up to you? Because New York City, Howard Stern, it's pretty... Is it annoying? Uh, no, I mean, normally I, I tell people I'm not him. Um, if they still want to take a selfie, sure. You know, as long as I'm not being annoying. Um, I mean, would you say it's a plus looking like him and walking around the same city as he does or would you say it's a negative or you just it doesn't matter to you doesn't matter doesn't matter it's a big city it's not like we're in uh bumfuck idaho you know we're in new york city well ron can i tell you how i first saw you I, we have ron and i have a mutual friend but the first time i saw ron was that you know ron you, you're gonna be like this is this is kind of weird that i remember this but the first time I saw Ron was at Lou Reed's memorial. And I saw this guy standing kind of like off to the side. And he, I think he had like a hoodie on. I'm like, that looks like Howard Stern. Like, why is he still like, he should come over and join us. Like, what is he doing over there? Like kind of like, like hiding, like just kind of looking around. And then I kept looking I'm like, that is that how like, I could not get it through my mind that it wasn't Howard Stern. Like it, it wasn't exactly him, but it really kind of looked like him. And I was really confused. And then I just decided myself that I'm going to Google, is there a guy that looks like Howard Stern in New York City? And lo and behold, Ron comes up. <laughs> so that's the first time I saw Ron. And, then, you know, we live in our neighborhoods are very close to each other. And I sometimes see him like walking around from time to time. And I always think it's Howard at first. And then I realize it's it's Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember going to Lou Reed's memorial? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a, a big Lou Reed fan, sure. Yeah. That was beautiful. That was a beautiful event. Yeah. Hey, Ron, yeah. so I wanted, to, I wanted yeah. to talk about your appearance on the Stern Show because you, you came in the studio and they did an episode on the Howard, Howard TV. And you came in and um, you were wearing this, this shirt that had a pig on it. Do you remember? And, and Howard was busting your balls about the shorts that you're wearing. They're like really oh, short yeah, shorts. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and he was, he was upset because you were walking around looking like him. And uh, he said, your fashion sucks and all this. <laughs> but uh, tell yeah, walk he, us. He was yeah. concerned because he thought that the shorts were gay looking. And he was concerned that people would think he was gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. And Dave Navarro came in. Um, and you were trying to, I mean, I think they're trying to have you sit at Howard's console and try to right. pretend that you were Howard, right? right? And then you, so were there video edits? Did you actually, was there a longer period of time where Dave Navarro came in and he actually thought it was you, like Howard? Or did, was he right off the bat? Like, oh, that's not Howard. No, because he was sitting in the green room. So he heard the whole transaction of Howard saying, let's, let's try to fool Dave Navarro. So oh, okay. He heard the whole thing. It was like, okay. So he probably would have been fooled. I, I mean, I think I would have been I mean, just by because I have a picture of it, and I can't put it up right now. But uh, if you look at the picture, 
like, dude, you look like Howard, you know, right there <laughs> sitting in his desk. Um, well, that's funny. Now, here's the thing. You look like your hairstyles like him now. Like, it seems like you evolve like he does in a sense. Like, from when I saw you back then on the Howard TV show, I don't remember what year was that, 2012 maybe? I don't even remember. Um, somewhere around there? I don't remember either. It could have been. 2010 to 12 or somewhere, right? Yeah. Can you still hear me? Yeah, we can still hear you. Can you, can you hear us? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Kimmer, so, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Weaver. I, I got to ask you, Ron. Um, I'm assuming you're similar in age to Howard, maybe a little bit younger. I'm just assuming. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. I'm actually a little bit older. Okay, you're a little bit older. So, but one of the things that I noticed, that, like Kimmer just said, is your look. Obviously, and I, I'm not saying you're intentionally doing it, but I'm sure, you know, you, you have the same hair, you wear the same type glasses. Um, one of the things that Howard, as he's gotten older, one of the criticisms, or I don't know if you want to call it criticism, is his hair in that he's never gone gray. He's, you know, obviously there's got to be something going on, whether he's using a hair system or he wears a wig or he wears, he has a, he has a <laughs> hair weave or. So I think you're somebody that would, we should ask is, yes. you know, are you, would you say without me getting too in depth into your methods, what do you think of Howard Stern? Do you believe that he's using some type of hair system or wig or implants That's or is that his question. real hair as he claims? Um, I don't know well enough. <laughs> uh, it looks like real hair. Um, well, Howard, Howard does live in the building with New York's like pretty much like the world's like premier expert in hair transplants. So oh. I'm just putting it out there. But Ron, you have. I, I suspect that he colors his hair, but you know, hey, why not? So, I mean, you have a full head of hair. God yeah. bless you. And can right? you see this? Yeah. I'm pulling. See, it's real. Yeah, it's real. Let me ask you something. Okay. Yeah. What year did you first become aware of Howard? I became aware of Howard probably in 1994. 1994. I go back to 88, 1988 person. I go back to 1986 probably. Okay. So if I sent you. A, a photo of myself from I don't from before what eighty four was the earliest eighty four yes. I believe someone yeah Weaver so if I send you a photo of me from before eighty four and I've got the same look as I have now would you say well I guess he didn't model himself after Howard Stern he had the look maybe Howard saw you and copied you maybe oh that's a conspiracy and these glasses. I got these glasses in the 70s because when I first got them, I thought they are the squarest looking glasses because John Denver had glasses like this. You guys probably don't know who John Denver Of course we do. Oh, I, I do. Didn't. I remember John Denver, sure. And he's got these square looking Rocky Mountain High glasses. And I thought, you know, they're, they're kind of cool in a weird way. So I got them in the 70s. Sal Moscat, you can call for the prescription. So your hair length has been pretty similar throughout your entire life. Like you've kept it that length and, or did you have it longer at a certain point? You, you always had long hair. You never shaved your head or got a hair crew cut. Well, there was, it was uh, in the sixties. I had this huge Afro when I fluff it out, it gets into this big Afro. So I have, uh, I can show you those pictures. Although I think they're on my Facebook. If you go to my Facebook account. Yeah, I've seen, an, I've seen enough pictures of you on, on the internet. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of them. Thanks. <laughs> no, but... Uh, then, um, at some point, my hair was really long. And then at some point, I got really tired of doing that. being recognized as Howard Stern, so I cut it short. Um, but you still look like him <laughs> when doing that, because he cut his hair short, pretty much. Really? Well, well, well now, you know, I mean, I mean, recently he's getting shorter and shorter, I would assume. I oh, think. cool. Yeah. And then for a while, um, my uh, 
girlfriend wanted me to be blonde, so this was in the 90s. I, so I went blonde, and I had that for a while, and then I got tired of being blonde, so uh, I dyed it blue and then cut it short. Now, in the well, 90s... Well, that brings up an interesting question, Jimmer. Yes? <laughs> we did a little bit of research on you, Ron, and we see that you had a girlfriend in the 80s. This is where the conspiracy theory deepens. You had a girlfriend in the 80s that looks a lot like Miss Robin. Not what, a girlfriend, that, that an ex-spouse, an ex-spouse, correct? Like, or, it looks like who? Looks like Robin Quivers. You, mar you were married to someone who looked like Robin, Robin Quivers, your ex-wife. No, she doesn't look like a Robin. Oh, she's my God, she looks, oh, she, she's a beautiful lady. Uh, uh, you you know, both Robin Quivers and your, is it your ex-wife, ex-spouse, I would assume? And, uh, yeah. she, oh my yeah. God. That's she Tanya. Looks, Tanya, yes. Tanya, she uh, won a Tony Award for Jelly's Last Gen. And she was in The Lion King, was she? No. Is she a Broadway actor? Okay. Yeah, and she, she, won you, a Tony, she won a Tony Award for uh, Jelly's Last Gen, and she's also had two Tony nominations. Uh, one for, I think, Caroline or Change. And one for something else. I mean, she's a beautiful lady, but she looks very similar to, to Robin. I well, mean, if, you, if you find a I photo of her from uh, 86, when we started dating. Yes. She doesn't look at all like Robin. I mean, that's not a bad thing. Let me tell you. She looks good. Um, and, and you have sons. Uh, you have two sons, I believe. Yes. Okay, and with with uh, with Tanya. Yes. Okay, and they're both actors as well, or in the movie business. Um, my older son is uh, an actor and a writer. Yeah. Um, he's in L.A. My uh, younger son is not, although they were both uh, for various uh, times of the Ford models. Okay. So, I want to ask you this. This this is the question I I wanted to ask you is looking like Howard Stern, especially in the '90s, because that's when he was like at like at the peak of his career, and he had a movie coming out, Private Parts, and all this. Dude, did you get action looking like Howard Stern? Do you ever get action? You must because he's iconic. He's a legend, and, and like people could totally mistake you as him, especially chicks. You must get some hot pussy looking like Howard, right? Dude, Robin asked me that question when I was on the show, and I turned to her and I said, Robin, look at me. I'm not a bad-looking guy. I don't have to pretend to be Howard to get laid. I know, but I'm just saying, like, dude, you... No, I've never, you... I've never, ever, that would be so... That would, it would just be a terrible thing to do. I think I, I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> if I looked like Howard, I'd probably do it. I mean, because yeah, the, the level of pussy he was getting was like Pamela Anders. You know, he could get anybody. I mean. Yeah, okay. And, and who did he get? He got like uh, porn stars and uh, models and actresses. Did he ever get with like a nuclear physicist? Did he ever get with a Supreme Court judge? Did he ever get with a professor at Harvard? No. Oh my. He got with like, oh. You want to go home with me tonight? Oh, yeah, you look, oh, yeah, you're famous. I'll go home with you tonight, sure. Like, who wants that? Oh, so you're more into women wow. that are intellectual. You're, you're into He's the intellectual. the anti Howard Stern. Yeah, you're like the anti. <laughs> you're absolutely go against every Howard Stern ideal right here. You're That's evil, tremendous. Howard. It's like a bizarro Howard Stern. Now I just, <laughs> yeah, bizarro, bizarro Howard. Howard. <laughs> I just put a picture up of uh, Tanya, who's very beautiful. She looks like Robin. You guys decide in chat what you think about. I mean, look at side by side. Look at. I mean, this is just like amazing. This is like. From what year is that? I'm not seeing it. What year uh, is that? You'll see it for for a sec. I, I, this is from a Broadway. It, it looks pretty recent. I would say. I'm not sure. Yeah. Can know. I ask another question? Yeah. Go ahead, Weave. Um. Just another question, Ron. Um. Did you know D. Snyder at all? You know, I don't know if you remember the head singer Twisted Sister or Ralph, the, the Howard stylist. 
Have you I'm ever sorry, met any of those guys? I'm not hearing you. Who? You remember D. Snyder? The, the, he was a friends with Howard in the 80s. They were oh, friends just, up to a few years. Oh, Twisted Sister. Yeah, the head singer. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Twisted Sister. I don't know him. I don't know him. Oh, but, well, because uh, he, he was the guy that originally, when Howard in 84 and 85, he was the one that convinced Howard to grow his hair and kind of have the look that you're saying that you have, that you had back then. And so I'm just saying, maybe if you had known D. Snyder, maybe that's how Howard <laughs> started. Maybe you know, he came from you, you know, because he yeah. was the guy that convinced Howard because of his build and his appearance to grow his hair and uh, the sunglasses, those type of shaped lenses and that type of thing. No, I, I don't know him. I actually wasn't a big Houston Sisters fan until very recently. Um, someone t- told me to watch a documentary called Twisted Fucking Sister. It's really good. Cool. So, anyway. Hey, Ron. Um, I know I keep going back to this Howard Stern thing because, I mean, how could we ignore it? <laughs> you know, I mean, Jesus Christ, you look more like Howard than Howard looks like Howard these days. Yeah. I mean, good lord. Um, well, You're missing a question. Yeah. You're what was that? A question, I think. What Which question? Is, if I'm not a Howard Stern fan, why was I on his show? They must. You know? I don't know. Well, they found you, right? I mean, you you must be recognized. Like, oh, that's the Howard. That's the Howard lookalike. We got to get this guy on the show. I don't know. To tell us the inside information there. Well, how did that all come about, getting on the show? Well, I write screenplays, and I got this how it's done thing so often that I wrote a screenplay. It's kind of meta. It's about a screenplay writer who looks a lot like Howard Stern, and eventually they meet up, and what starts off as a kind of a comedy becomes very dark thriller. So I knew that the only way this would work is if Howard played good twin, evil twin. And depending on who you, how you look at it, either the writer is the good twin or Howard is a good twin. So um, I just decided I was going to get on his show and ask him. And um, that's what I did. So this... Uh... I guess this thing that you wrote, the script, um, was that the Becoming Howard? Right. Because was that it? Becoming Howard. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, so after writing the script, I guess Howard's team or whoever, their staff members got wind of it or they wanted you in? Or What happened was um, uh, I did some research. Because I really didn't, I wasn't a fan. I really knew very little about it. Even to write the screenplay, I had to go on Wikipedia to, to learn some stuff about it. So I found out the show was broadcast from the, uh, the Sirius Satellite Studio in the Royal Hill Building. Yeah. So I just went up there one morning and uh, with a copy of the script and uh, like a cover letter introducing myself. And I walked in there, and it's like one of those post-9-11 buildings with the, uh, the, the turnstiles across the elevator, and you've got to have, like, an ID card to get in. Yes. So I got in there, and I just stood there for a second, figuring out, you know, just like, oh, what do I do now? And while I'm standing there, this security person comes over and says, oh, you forgot your card again, didn't you? Oh, my and God. I, Right, a security person who sees him every fucking day. She Holy came over and said, "You forgot your ID card again, huh?" And I said, "Yeah." And oh she my said, God. "Follow me." So I went over to the security desk and she printed out one of those, you know, pictures of me of Howard. And um, then I thought, you know what? If I get up there with this fake thing on. I'm probably going to leave here in handcuffs, and <laughs> this poor woman is going to get fired. 
So I just said, do me a favor, can you send this up to uh, Howard? Can you send it up to the studio, please? And yes. I gave her my package. Um, and then they called me. The, uh, one of the producers called me. I think his name is Will. Will Murray, yeah. Yeah. So he called me and he asked me if I wanted to be on the show. And I said, no, I don't want to be on the show. I just want Howard to do my screenplay. And he said, well, that's a great idea. Uh, that's a great uh, reason for you to be on the show. So you can pitch Howard on doing your screenplay. So and how did that go? Did okay, you pitch it? So I'll be on the show. But did you pitch uh, the, the screenplay to Howard at a certain point privately or on air? I pitched it to him on air. And he said uh, he was about to start a big project. He couldn't talk about it yet, but it was going to take all his time. And that turned out to be America's Got Talent. Ah, okay. Which brings us to another thing, but I want to, uh, I'm going to get back to America's Got Talent. But um, did you have a private, did you have any sort of private conversation with Howard after uh, being on air? Did, did he come to you and say, hey, you know, whatever? Did you guys have any sort of interaction together? Uh, besides being on air, did you have any conversation at all with Howard? The only follow-up, and I don't know if you can follow up, um, I asked to take a photo with him, and he had the staff photographer take a photo of the two of us, you know, all in on and all that. Um, and he said he would have sent it to me, and he never did. Oh. And about... I don't know, maybe a year later, I got contacted from the show again. Uh, I forget they wanted something. They didn't ask me to come back on, or they wanted a release of some footage or something. And I said, I never got this photo. Give me the photo, <laughs> and then we can talk. Yeah. Uh, or pay me. Um, I, there's no reason at this point. How is it said he's not going to do my nice screenplay? There's no reason for me to have any further contact with him unless you're paying me. Wow. So you are that. Howard. <laughs> you're cheap. You're Howard. <laughs> I just yeah, kidding. I don't, work, I don't work for free. You know? I'm just it's kidding. Oh, really? Hey, you got some balls, man. You got some balls asking Howard for some money. <laughs> <laughs> got big balls. The guy's got like what a billion dollars, and he can't afford to pay me to come on a show. Fuck no, me. he he only has six hundred million dollars. Okay, oh, so sorry. calm down. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Get it straight. He only makes about ninety million a year. Okay, like come on, he can't pay you. Who's got time for that? He's got money for that. Okay, talking about uh, America's Got Talent. Okay, so when Howard did America's Got Talent his sort of fandom or his fan base started becoming younger, a different audience he was reaching uh, because of the show and how big it is across America. Now that must have been uh, translated towards you when you walk the streets now, people are like, oh my God, it's how like little kids are probably like, oh my God, Howard from America's Got Talent. Did you get a lot of that at when he was doing uh, America's Got Talent? Yeah, uh, now that you mentioned it, it's very interesting. Probably, probably I did as younger people, but I didn't really notice it so much. That was the big thing. Like people weren't trying to audition for you, like on the street, like, <laughs> hey, you know, like. <laughs> no, 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 no. No? No, no. Especially because Howard would mention that, like, w when he started doing AGT, America's Got Talent, his fan base were, like, young girls started coming up to him. Did you did you notice that? Like, little child, like children actually clamoring towards you? <laughs> no, no, no. Wow, no. okay. Interesting. Yeah. I know, Ron, I know you got some pussy looking like Howard. I know it. In the 90s especially. You're, you're probably getting laid left and right. Right? Yeah. Come on, fess up now. You know it. You know, I, 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 like I said, I'm, I'm home a lot. Um, I go out sometimes, you know, I got some friends who are photographers who go to shows and photography parties together. But I, I'm not like a player, dude. I'm not a player at all. Hey, Ron, let me guess something. You, you, you've got a girlfriend right now? <sighs> oh, boy. Interesting question. Uh oh. I've, I've been with somebody 
for the last 18 months. Um, and we just decided to go on kind of a hiatus, take some time off. It's, uh, it's, it's sad. It's, uh, you know. Oh, yeah, of course. Any relationship that breaks up, I mean, that, that's a... It yeah. sucks going through that. But did she look like Beth uh, Stern, Beth Ostrowski? Uh, That's the question. Nah, not a bit. No. <laughs> Was she blonde, tall, blonde model? No. 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 Although, you know, uh, in, in 2009, I was with a woman who was tall, blonde. Oh, my God. This is bizarre. And, but she was like, of all the crazy women I've been with, she was probably up there. I have this, this uh, chest of drawers in my uh, bedroom. It's about, I don't know, five, two and a half feet high. One night I woke up in the middle of the night, I heard this, these like moaning sounds. She had somehow climbed on top of these chest of drawers and was crouched down there masturbating. What the fuck? Right? Yeah, what's her number? <laughs> <laughs> nice catch, man. Nice. All right. All right. Wow, that's crazy. So she was standing on a dresser wanking off? She was crouched on her hands and knees. Well, on, on her knees in one hand, and the other hand, she was jigging off. Yeah. Kitty does that every night. But yeah, why kidding. on the dresser? That's so weird. The question for me is, how the fuck did she get up there? Like, she's like an know. animal. Right? <laughs> she jumped up there. I mean, good lord, man. Wow. <laughs> we, we can, we get, can we interview her for the show? Can we get her on there? <laughs> maybe maybe uh, she'll do America's Got Talent or something. <laughs> oh, she should totally be on America's yeah, Got Talent. she should totally do that. <laughs> You know, um, I was going to call Wendy. Well, maybe we'll call her at the end, but um, I wanted to talk about some of the stuff that you're doing now. Okay. So you're a writer. Um, you're working with somebody. Go ahead and tell us what's going on with uh, the book that's going to be coming out and stuff. Okay. I just finished a co writing a book called In a Prior Life. And prior is spelled T R Y O R. And it's a memoir or biography of Richard Pryor Jr. Oh, okay. And um, if you Google his dad, you'll find all kinds of... That's great... pretty cool. I think yeah. I know Richard Fryer. I heard of him. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. You know, people, a lot of people in their 20s don't know who he is. Damn millennials. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's got a publisher. We, uh, we're just finalizing some of the uh, photo credits because uh, we want to make sure we get the credits right. And then that'll go to the publisher uh, probably by the end of the week. And uh, whatever the process at that point is, uh, there'll be an editor uh, come back to us for typos and stuff. And then whatever gets published, we'll see what happens. So, because Richard Pryor had multiple children, right? I, I want to say about five to seven. I don't even know. Yeah. A lot of Same. children. So yeah. he had one son, or he has one son. Uh, he, he called Junior, Richard Pryor Jr. That, that's yeah. who you're working with. And with Richard Pryor Jr., is there something unique about him uh, as far as his... I mean, he must have a lot of shit to talk about, I mean, in this book. Is there something that you can tell us, just share, like, maybe one unique story? Or um, I don't know a whole lot about Richard Pryor Jr., but is there something... Uh, that comes to mind or because he must have a lot of fascinating stories uh that... he has some he's had a very fascinating life uh it, it's it hasn't been easy it has not been easy in fact uh at one point as an adult uh, richard senior said to him that had he known how famous and successful he would have been he never would have known him after himself hmm. yeah um he was physically abused 
he was uh, uh, addicted to you know, various addictions. Um, wow. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's an he's older gentleman. Is he in what? his 50s or something like that? Some, is he what? Is he in his 50s? Yeah, is he's 55. Right? Oh, okay. All right. Well, God damn. So we're going to open up the phone lines. you want to take questions from anybody who calls in? Me? Yeah, Ron. Sure, okay. Okay, I'm going to open up the phone lines right now. So if you guys over here want to ask Ron a question, go ahead and call in. But no douchebags, no trolls. I'll yeah, hang up on you. your ass. Thank you. Thank I'll you kick your ass. Yeah. You want to talk to Howard, go ahead. Billiam, are you on here? Do you want to ask any questions? Billiam's not here. He, he took off. Oh, Billiam's not here. Okay. Um. So the, when's the book going to come out for the uh, in a prior life, Richard Pryor Jr.'s book? When was the? That I don't know what the uh, schedule uh, publication schedule is. Um, I hope to know that next week. Maybe. This might be a troll call, but we'll, we'll take it and let's see. We'll take our bets. What? What do you need? Hello. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? I'm going to see if I can ask a question. Are you there? Dude, we can barely hear you, bro. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, great. I was just wondering what it's like working with Robin. Okay, you dummy. <laughs> you know what? Let's, the, maybe the phone calls is a bad idea. <laughs> uh, fuck these idiots. All right, let's go ahead and uh, I'm Jesus. going to turn off the phone. <laughs> Working with Robin. Yeah, the, uh, what is it like working with Robin? Well, you know, I'm she's, gonna have used to, to... she's used to somebody a little bigger than me, but, you know. Do you, do you... <laughs> Are you a large man? Do you have a large penis? Or do you have a yeah. small penis like Howard? No, I'm much larger than Howard. We, we did a comparison in the men's room. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 oh my god. Did you take a picture? <laughs> His staff photographer took a picture, but he won't send it to me. <laughs> Who was the staff photographer, guys? Jason Kaplan. Uh, Jason, fact. somebody tell email Jason. Yeah, William. Uh email William. Jason Kaplan. You have his number on speed dial. It's been like fucking five, six, seven, eight years now. I think Ron should get that photo. <laughs> and Howard should sign it. <laughs> or at least pay me. Yeah, pay him. Pay the man. Give me the photo. Dude, they're notorious for not paying. You know that. Uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Wow. So you're 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 single, is what you're saying. You're you're on the mar or you're free. I'm free right now. Yeah. Yeah. And you're gonna go to a party tonight, and you're yeah. gonna get laid. Correct. I don't know. You know, it's actually um, it's a party for a magazine called um, Victory. It's a photography. I think it's a photography magazine. They have a party four times a year. It's kind of fun. They usually there's always you know like open bar and uh, DJ and hot babes and hot good looking guys and you know. I mean, I see pictures of you on Google and stuff like that, and you are with hot chicks. Do you um, swing both ways, Ron? There we go. <laughs> Come I've on, Ron. Four different ways. Four. Oh. Well, Kitty four wants to get with you. <laughs> she does too. <laughs> She's into, she might be into Beastie Ellie. I'm just and kidding. You, Kitty, I'll, go, I'll go five. I'll go five different ways. Whoa. Ah, ah. Kitty's no, up Ron, for it, Ron. Have, have, you ever, have you ever had a, a, ho a, a, a homosexual sort of experience? Ever? Just get time in the bathroom with Howard when we're holding our dicks against each other. <laughs> so are you saying Howard is uh, gay? <laughs> are you confirming that? <laughs> Allegedly. Oh my god. I, I swear to god, Ron has gotten laid multiple times looking like Howard. So I don't care what he says, you know. Ron, do you ever do you think a girl ever slept with you because she thought you were Howard? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you think you were, did you ever have that scenario and then you just like let her think that you were Howard? No, I, I think that sometimes um, it's happened that um, that a woman may have gotten off on 
the idea of, you know, getting attention. Mm -hmm. But they've known uh, Tony, I mean, you, I mean, what's your name? Ron. Okay. Has a woman ever called you Howard in bed? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just, just Robin that one time. <laughs> oh, Robin! But you've never role played with a woman where she was like she pretended you were Howard and you like. Yeah, that's just no. Uh, that's creepy. I, I mean, <laughs> it's creepy. I, I think you it's never creepy. know. There's lots of freaks here in New York City. Well, well, Kitty, do, do, would you like to uh, you know role play with him? That's to you, and, uh, she likes pegging. She likes sure. pegging dudes. <laughs> Oh, who is that gentleman? Is that Ralph? Yeah, come here, come here, Miles, come here. It's no, Ralphie that's, Cakes? That's my son. Oh, that's your son. Oh, oh my God. Um, Did you see him? Uh, oh. We saw his head. We, his, oh. we, can't oh. make, we can't make him out, but... <laughs> you know what? Let's try Wendy. You want to you pretend that you're Howard with Wendy here for a second? Let's see how long this goes. Okay, I'm going to put that chin up a little bit like Howard does. Okay. I don't think you, you don't have to do much. It's Wendy, the slow adult. Come on, run. <laughs> you could drink her. Is she here? I'm calling her right now. Oh, this is great. All right, so let's see if she picks up. Come on, Wendy. Come on, honey. Uh, she Jesus, wants to talk to her. Howard's brother. It's unprofessional. <laughs> Come on, honey. Pick up, sweetheart. You guys could talk while I get this shit set up here. Okay. So, Ron, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm actually, I was in the camp thinking that Howard wore a wig. But after hearing from you, I might actually believe now that it is his hair. I'm, uh. I don't know. Yeah, his father, his father's totally bald. And, but the only thing that gets me about him is he, he insists that he doesn't color his hair. See, that's where he made his mistake. He should just say he colors his hair. And what about you, Ron? Do you color your hair? Be honest. Do you see the gray? Do you see the gray in there? there do you see the very, gray? Oh, yeah, I do see it, yeah. So you don't color your hair either? At all? You know, from time to time, as I said before, I've been blonde. I've had blue hair. Um... This summer, I was thinking about doing like shaving the sides and doing like a some kind of color on top. But otherwise, um, you know, when I did that that ten minute um, I'm not him thing, I, I colored my hair with a temporary dab, so it was real dark. His his dark brown hair that he has, um, but my hair is much lighter than his. Oops. He's man, maybe maybe that's amazing. Hey Ron, are you like a rich guy? Am I a rich guy? Yeah, are you uh, pretty wealthy? No. You're not wealthy. I have a uh, I live in a loft in the Flatiron District that's worth considerable amount of money, but unless I sell it, um, I just yeah I'm a working stick. Oh yeah, money. Ron, I heard that you sometimes look for a roommate. Um, would you consider having high pitch Eric as a roommate? Who? <laughs> that means no. Uh, uh, <laughs> high pitch Eric. Do you know high pitch Eric from the Stern show? That fat manatee? Oh, I mean the, um, the, the, the obese. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm not supposed to call him that. High pitch Eric. Get me Just get me a beer. Come on. Oh. Come on, son. Get him a beer. Just get do a something. beer. Yeah. You're not paying rent. Come on, buddy. Is he paying rent? Is your son paying rent? Do you, do you make your sons pay rent? No. Me neither. No. Oh, man. Go get him a beer. Miles, or I don't know which son it is, but uh, uh, Wendy's asking her mom if she could call in, so we'll see. Um, so, man, look at that hair, man. That's a full head of hair. At 60-something, I would assume. Uh, I'm going to tell you, my whole viewpoint, honestly, is changing. Don't say any personal information about it. Don't say anything about it. Um, thanks. Thank you, Wells. <laughs> your your son is probably jealous that you get oh. laid because you look like Howard. Does he look like um 
like I don't know uh, Ralph or anybody <laughs> who does he look like <laughs> from the Howard Stern show staff does he look like Fred Norris or Artie Lang anybody no you said one of your one of your sons is a model uh I've just been told I shouldn't tell any personal information about them. Oh, okay. Them. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's not talk about them. Um, let's see if Wendy's going to... Yeah, I'm, I'm still holding up on Wendy here. But uh, Weaver was saying that now he has a different outlook because your hair, it, it, it's clearly not fake. It's not a wig. So Howard, maybe, I guess... I mean, there's no question in my viewpoint because I think Ron and him have a lot of the same, obviously, a lot of the same characteristics physically. Oh, yeah. And it's possible. I didn't really think it was possible that Howard's hair wouldn't turn gray. I mean, I didn't understand that, but I could be absolutely wrong. No question. It wasn't so much whether he had hair. It was his hair. It's that he always said he never colored his hair. That's where I always call bullshit. But Ron's kind of saying the same thing. Pretty much that Howard said, so it must be just those type of genetics. It's a total Jewish thing, you know. Are you okay, so you're Jewish, your your both your parents are? Or half half or okay. Yeah. Are you a practicing like is that I'm something you fall are you religious? Atheist. Ah. And let's talk a little bit about politics. Do you get into politics at all? Are you very uh, or you stay away from that kind of stuff. You're just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to even get involved with this kind of shit. No, no. I, uh, I went to school. I went to college in Wisconsin. I'm very left, leftist, very left wing. Did you vote uh, for Hillary? Well, yeah. Because but... it was the better of the two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, who who was a candidate? Were you like more of a Bernie Sanders guy or definitely Gary Johnson? <laughs> it's like Gary Johnson. I'm Bernie T-shirt. Oh man, so yeah. you're you're active politically. So I'm gonna assume I'm just gonna safely assume you don't like President Trump, right? No. <laughs> don't mind my saying so. It's a piece of shit. Oh man, piece of human excrement. And you did. I hope he goes down soon, and I hope that he winds up in jail. Oh my! Lock him oh. up! Lock him up! Lock him! Lock him up! <laughs> what? You don't want to grab him by the pussy ever? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to grab either him, Ivanka, or what's her name, Melania, by the pussy. No, oh, no poor Melania. Melania! Oh lord! Ron, I got to call a little bit of bullshit on that. If Melania Trump was laying spread eagle in your bed right now, you you wouldn't you wouldn't do anything with Melania Trump, really? If she was lying on my bed naked, yes, Melania spread Trump, eagle. Trump, she's she's a dude. If you were lying naked on my bed, I'd probably you know try to pack you. So you know, oh, sure. he... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome! Wow. Well, I'm not going to keep you too long here, and I really appreciate you coming on here. And I just, I am just like in awe. Like it's almost like meeting Howard, to, you know, for me. I mean, <laughs> it's just like, I mean, this is the closest thing I'm, I'm going to get to Howard. Like this is it. This is me. This is it, man. <laughs> Wendy's uh, in the chat, YouTube chat, Jimmer, and she's asking everybody whether this is really Howard or not. So. Yeah, should I? Um, Wendy is very confused right now, Ron. So let me see if um, she will pick up this time. But uh, she's, she's having her doubt. She says, is this really Howard? I don't know. Was that Wendy, old? how can I unconfuse you? Hello? Hi, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Hey. Okay, hold on, Wendy. I'm going to put you on with Howard here. Hold on. Do you see Howard? There he is. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Talk to Howard. Hey. Hey, Wendy. How are you? Just chill him. What's up? Do you have any questions for Howard? I know you just saw him in New York uh, a few weeks uh, back. What are you doing? I'm doing this uh, show. You know, I'm promoting myself. You know, it's what I do. Oh, okay. 
what do you do you like how he looks do you, you love howard right yeah wendy? do you want to where, where are you wendy walmart i'm at home watching the unicorn <laughs> the unicorn she's watching the unicorn at home um, Wendy, do you want to say anything to Howard? Because you were upset that he always hits on Robin Quivers and he's married to Beth. Uh, go ahead. This is your opportunity to yell at Howard and let him have uh, why it. Why are you all the time uh, messing and, uh, with Robin? Go ahead, Howard. What's the question again? Why am I always making fun of her? Robin. Her. Why are you always hitting on Robin, Howard? And making Wendy jealous. Howard. I, I am so sorry. I, I really didn't mean to make you jealous. Uh, it's part of our, our act. Part of our act, how we, how we uh, relate to each other. We've developed this over a period of many years, and it seems to be successful. So we just carry it on. So, Howard, are you telling Wendy that she has nothing to worry about? There's no hanky-panky going on between you and Robin? There's no, there's no hanky-panky going on between anybody else except Wendy and me. Wendy, what do you think about that? That Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything else to say about, um, I guess, uh, Beth, maybe, his wife? I have no idea. Are you okay with Beth? Okay, I think she's ha she's having family. The problems. dog's chewing on her leg right now. Sorry, Ron. <laughs> hey, Wendy, do you want to? Do you need to go, honey? Uh, sorry, yeah. Okay. Well, anything else you want to say to Howard at all? Before? Uh, not that I can think of right now. Can you let Howard know what you think about um uh, Hillary Clinton, please? Go ahead. Uh, Hillary Clinton can go to hell. Okay. That's about right. And what about Bernie Sanders? you know who Bernie Sanders is? No. Okay. Uh, what about President Obama? Can you go ahead and uh, tell Howard what you think about President Obama? Go ahead. He can kiss my booty. All right. Well, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah! <laughs> uh, can, can I see your booty? Show me your booty. Show me your booty. Well, Howard says, Wendy, that you have nothing to worry about. Um, he loves you. And he does not love Robin. It's just a gimmick. Okay? It's just okay. a bit between them. And uh, he doesn't love his wife either, right? I believe. He loves you more. He loves his wife. He just loves you, Wendy, more. So you have nothing to worry about. Do not be jealous. Right, Howard? She should right. not be jealous. Right. Don't there you be go. jealous. So. Okay. All right. Howard loves you. All right. All right. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Wow. She's. Ron, she's Ron just played Mall Santa Claus to Wendy. <laughs> not sure what that is but okay uh well ron i think it's time um i, I really i really had a good time i hope you did and i appreciate you yeah. coming on this was really thanks, good ron. we're gonna put ron's up. ron's book up yes um and ron is there anything else you want to say about your book and the stuff you're working on um no yeah, this is um the only thing I would say is that uh, as part of my contract with the uh, uh, with Richard is that um, I have a year from the date of publication to adapt it into a screenplay. Ooh! And, um, since I'm basically more of a screenplay writer than a memoirist, I'm looking forward to that. I have a quick and, question though about uh, Richard Pryor. Okay, I don't know if. Um, Junior gets into his dad a lot. I'm going to assume in the book there's a lot of stories about uh, Richard Pryor Sr. Um, yes. And I don't know. They're saying a lot of things about him in the media. I don't know, just recently about, I think, did they say that he might have been gay or he had experiences? Or am I talking, is that somebody else? I don't even remember. No, it's him. Okay. Now, it's is there a lot of like tell all stuff that's secret that nobody knows about stories about Richard Pryor senior that Richard Pryor junior reveals in this book? I mean, I know you can't say it now because you're, you know, you probably can't release that information, but is there a lot of stuff for us to look forward to in this book where 
it's uh whoa jesus christ that really happened there's some conversations between uh dad and uh son that are very personal and intimate that i don't believe have been uh seen before uh as far as what you're talking about uh there was a Quincy Jones interview in Quincy which Jones. he talked about Marlon Brando with fuck like, anything with fuck like, a mailbox with fuck like, oh. uh, Richard Pryor. Um, who else did he refer to? James Baldwin. And um, I, it was very weird. Yeah, uh, I remember. That's out there. Um, do so you ever. Do you ask? That, no, anything that's out there, uh, we didn't go near. Uh, I think I referred to that at one point, but it's just Quincy Jones is, you know, he's like, brilliant and great, but he's like 200 years old, so his memory is maybe not all that reliable. Yeah, so it's not valid. Yeah. I hear what you say. And so you've been a writer for a long time, right? Yes. And have you seen the evolution of how a book gets published now? Like, because now everything's so, like, in your face with the technology. Like, the, the books are electronic now. Uh, people purchase a different way. People read a different way now than they used to even 10 years ago, 5, 10 years ago. It's way different now. Has that changed for you? Is it difficult now uh, to make money off of writing than it was back in the day? It's always difficult to make money in a Always has been, always will be. But is it uh, more challenging now <laughs> due to technology? Um, from my end, it's changed a little bit because of this. Um, people asking me to do stuff. Uh, whereas before I was just throwing a lot of shit against the wall and hoping something stuck. Now, um, I seem to be getting people calling me and saying, hey, can you do this? Hey, would, I'd like you to do this or that or the other. So that's changed for me, but a lot of it is because I've been doing this for so long. Right. Oh, can I say one other thing? Yeah, go for it. When I was on the show, this always kind of rankled me. Howard said, so are you a loser? And... <laughs> are you? <laughs> Here's the thing. So what I, but it didn't, because I was so taken aback by the question, it didn't occur to me to say, Howard, you've been on the air for how long? And do you have an Emmy Award? Well, mm. I have an Emmy Award. Wow. So you but, have an Emmy Award for what? What did you write? Did you write soap operas? I was a music director on a soap opera. And I have an Emmy Award for music composition and direction. So I saw that on your IMDb. No, he does not have an Emmy Award. Loser. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you are evil, Howard. No, We're going to call you. Yeah, you're evil, Howard. You're not know, have evil David Letterman. He's Bizarro <laughs> Howard. He's bizarro, bizarro Howard. There we go. Holy shit, man. He likes intellectual women. Howard goes to the <laughs> airheads. Hey, Ron, <laughs> you see. Accomplished yes. women. Uh, accomplished women like uh, are getting by on more than their looks. That's exactly. Awesome. That's yeah. Ron, you do seem like you have some confidence, and you maybe you're a ladies' man. Do you have any advice for Billiam, who just joined us? Because he's a 25 year old uh, Jewish virgin, and I threw Jewish in there because you guys are both Jews. So, can you give some advice to this kid, uh, William? Do you want to speak with uh, Ron here? Are you here, William? I'm kind of here. I'm peeling carrots. This is the math PhD oh my God, kid, dude. student. Are you fucking kidding? Give this kid advice. This guy's peeling onions or whatever. He, that's peeling what he does. Now you want I'm, I'm making dinner for my family. Oh, God. You're oh. peeling carrots. What are you going to do with those carrots, man? Ah, I'm, ah, I'm going to ah. roast them in the oven. Oh, sure. Which oven? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> What's his name? Ah. What's the guy's not name? The, What's his not the not the uh, Auschwitz oven? That's for sure. Like Ron, do you have any advice for him? So because he's a twenty-five-year-old virgin, and he hates where, being called. Where do you live, dude? Near Chicago. What time? 
I don't want to say exactly. I don't want to. I don't want that information out there. But I live in about an hour outside of Chicago. Gary, Wilmette, Peoria, somewhere. <laughs> Everybody does this to you, William. <laughs> well, okay. In Peoria, that's where Richard uh, he left. Claire and Richard Pryor Jr. are both from Peoria, and um, the Richard and Junior were both uh, partially raised in whorehouses. So my guess is that if you go to Peoria and ask around, you can find one of those whorehouses. <laughs> what he did he say? I didn't, hear, I didn't catch the end. He said there's whorehouses because Richard Pryor and his son were there in Peoria. In Peoria. Yeah. Go to William, Peoria, what do you think? Ask go around to... where the whorehouses are <laughs> and, you know, do it. Uh, that's so not. Have you, Bob, do you ever in, indulge in prostitutes? Do you ever use prostitutes? Oh my! No. Do you Bullshit. ever go on the site Rub Map? That's like what? Do you know what Rub Map is? No. What is that? It's just this like website that's like maps of all the 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 massage parlors that give happy endings. Oh my! No, let me write that down. What's it called? Rub Map. <laughs> R U B M A P. Rub well, Kitty map. will give you a happy ending. You don't need to go there, Ron. Give Kitty. <laughs> you know what? I can do my own happy ending. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, Ron. Do you ever do online dating? Have you ever used Tinder, Grinder, uh, Bumble, OK Cupid? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I haven't used uh, Bumble or Tinder. Um, I've used uh, OK Cupid and uh, a long time ago, I was on Match dot com. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're not doing that? Do, like, do you still, are, are you considering uh, doing Because I know you just broke up, but. I, yeah, you know, I just checked in recently with OkCupid, okay but um, it's just so much trouble revising your profile all the time. And it's a job, you know, and I, I go out and I live like in the Flatiron District. There's just a million people on the street that I, I talk to in Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and the bars that I go to, that um, it's just nicer to meet people in person. Because um, everybody on the dating sites, they lie. So it's like going on a blind date because you don't know who's actually going to show up um, based on their profile and their photos. So, uh, yeah, I hear what you're saying. It's kind of like real life. You don't know what you're going to get. They're all liars. In real life, too, at a bar. Oh, Forrest Gump. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a box of chocolates. You never know what you It's mean. a shit show. New York, dating in New York, you think it'd be a lot easier, but in New York City, it's a total shit show. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just, everyone's so <laughs> whack. Like, everybody is just, like, up their own ass here, I feel. And, mm. and men commoditize women because there's like way more women than there are men and it's really? just like you know they just keep like recycling women the man's world kitty welcome to it yeah well throw me a bone i need something oh i think we can't hear you anymore you gotta uh exit out and come back in ron so ghetto it doesn't work. We're going to have to let him go you got, soon. You got me now? I got back? you now. Yeah. Let me just wait for your um, video feed. There it is. Perfect. What were you saying? Uh, I was suggesting that Kitty move to Illinois and, and, you know, connect with William and, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I it mean, be boring for me. Hey, you know what? I wouldn't be opposed to moving to New York, so. Well, there you go. <laughs> Would you ever date Kitty? Uh, Ron, you see a picture of her. She's awfully cute. Yeah, I would tell you. What's your yeah. type, though? What's your, do you have a specific type? Um, would, you, would you put your tongue in her ass? Coming from the virgin. <laughs> 25-year-old virgin. Uh, would I put my tongue in her ass? I think that's a subject that I would have to discuss with Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty may not like the idea of my tongue in her ass. I would have to ask her that. But what is oh, your type? What is your type, Ron? What do you do? You, do you like blonde chicks, brunettes? 
uh, different um, ethnicities? I, I tend to be attracted to somewhat crazy women, I would say. In bed or just in general? In general. Yeah. And Kitty's right up your alley. Yeah, she's pretty crazy. I mean, Jesus. So, yeah. Let's have a drink. Oh. Can you just say I'm insane, Jimmer? <laughs> no, that was Billy. Uh, Kitty, uh, would you go out with Ron? Ron said, let's have a drink at some sure. point. Sure. I'll meet you tomorrow at Almonds. You know where Almonds is? Oh, my. Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, I, I live in, um, I live close to there. I live in Union Square. Okay. I'll meet you tomorrow at, uh, oh, wait, tomorrow's Thursday. I, like to, I, I do the uh, galleries a lot on Thursdays. Take Maybe her to a gallery. The galleries. Yeah, take her to a gallery. I don't know. Chelsea yeah, galleries. He, Alex will come too. Alex, Alex wants to go out. Alex is a big titty. Uh, she has H H bombs, H cup breasts, blonde, beautiful. Fine. What do you? Are you okay with big breasts? Sure. Okay. Right. Sure. Just want to make sure. Hey, who is it? Ah, ah, <laughs> so you're gonna get two ladies. You're gonna get Kitty and her friend Alex. Two bombshells. Nice. Oh. There you go. There you go. Jesus. Right. Ron, have you ever had a threesome with two ladies? Yes. Oh, fucking asshole. <laughs> Why does he get it? Yeah, you yeah. are using your Howard Stern looks to, to get that. There is no way. There is no way Ron, you're getting that without other looking good, like Howard. The other good part is Kitty has boxes of condoms at her house. So don't, you don't have to bring your own. She's got them that there for you. I actually have had a vasectomy. Oh. All right. Then, cream, then just give her your old cream pie. She's not fertile anyhow. She's, uh, she's a little <laughs> bit older. You're okay with older oh, women? Summer. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Zimmer, I probably won't even go through menopause for 20 more years. Do you believe that, Ron? <laughs> for a second. I, have no idea. I see a picture of her. She looks very cute. Oh, that was from the, the 50s. Been her high school graduation. Yeah, that was like a few months ago, you idiot. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was from the 50s or 60s. My bad. <laughs> this is how Jimmer treats me. Oh, Ron. Ron is actually cool. I like Ron. He's very chill. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Ron, you should stop by again. Yeah, when okay. your book comes hey, out. Listen, when the book comes out, um, I'll come by again and, and do some serious promotional shit. Hell yeah. All I right. love that. Definitely. Well, thanks for stopping uh, by, man. I appreciate this. It has been uh, fun, man. Thanks, have, Ron. Thanks for coming. Have a so good time at that uh, party over there thanks, tonight. Howard. <laughs> thanks, Bizarro Howard. Yeah, right, baby. Howard. Evil Howard. Right, guys. Have a good evening. All right. Take care, buddy. Peace. Peace and love, baby. Peace and love. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. That was awesome, huh, guys? I need to go get some food. I know everybody. Uh, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> run, 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 run. Okay, I'll be back later. It's still three thirty here. Uh, maybe in a uh, two hours, three hours. I'll be back at about that time, six p.m. ish, six thirty. So. 9 p.m. 9 30 eastern standard time i'll be back i actually had more questions for him but i know we kind of like didn't have enough time and he's got to go do shit you know he's got he's got parties to he's got chicks to bang he's got kitty to bang i wanted to ask him if it's okay um for us to periscope the date that would be cool with him and kitty and alex hanging out i think that would be real fun so we'll see what happens there. Um, I think we got a. Love you, no homo. I love you, homo. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Ron Brower, everybody. Um, I'm going to make sure I get all of his social media stuff out to you guys. If you want to follow him on Twitter and anything that he does. And also his book. I'm going to keep you guys very informed on that. Ron Brower. Uh, there we go. I'll see you guys in about two hours or so. I already said that. 
Bye for now. Ack, ah, ack, don't let the bunnies out. Yeah, baby. Keys, one keys, Johnny Frado. Where's my outro? It's right here, bitch. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe right here on YouTube. <laughs> monthly sponsors. I need monthly sponsors for the show. Patreon.com forward slash Jimmer Nam is where to go, baby. To do that. Now, one-time donations go straight up to the candy ass website. JimmerNam.com. Come. I mean, dot com. Now, if you love Ron Brower, who wouldn't? Give this video a like and a share. This video goes in the refrigerator, doors close, the lights are out, the ends are cool, and the butter's getting hard, and the jello is jiggling, baby.